Hello, fourth graders. We are on lesson 13 today, which is called Under the Sea. And here's your vocab. Submersible is a noun, and that is kind of like a submarine, but it is, um, it can go deeper underwater for research, so like an underwater car, kind of. Rugged is an adjective, and that means having a rough, uneven surface. A hydrothermal vent is a noun, and these are deep sea geysers that form as seawater sinks down through cracks in the crust. So it, it's a geyser that forms where there's cracks, and it releases really hot, mineral-rich water um, through those cracks. A seamount is a noun, and that is an underwater volcano that forms wherever magma is erupting through the oceanic crust, so an underwater volcano. Underlie is a verb, and that means to be located under something. Firsthand is an adverb, and that means coming directly from seeing or experiencing something. And then a school is a noun, uh, and not like a school we go to, but a school of, of um, ocean animals. So it's a big number of ocean animals, and they swim together. So chapter nine is called Earth's Undersea World. And our big question is how does the movement of tectonic plates shape and change the ocean seafloor? Imagine that you are dropping down, down, down into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The seawater outside the submersible gets darker and darker. Soon the light fades completely. Outside is a watery world as black as night. Finally, the sub's lights pick up shapes below as the ocean bottom comes into view. You can see lumpy hills and looming peaks of dark volcanic rock. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The ridge marks the boundary between several enormous tectonic plates. Portions of these plates form the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Mountains and moving plates. In chapter eight, you learned some of the ways Earth's slowly moving tectonic plates build mountains. Over millions of years, their movements have created many mountains and mountain ranges on land. Moving plates also build mountains underwater. In fact, there are more mountains on the seafloor than on all of Earth's continents and islands combined. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a long, rugged, underwater mountain range. It runs for thousands of miles along the boundary between tectonic plates that meet in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. The plates are very slowly moving apart at this boundary. Remember Alfred Wegener? Wegener proposed the idea of continental drift in the early 1900s. At the time, though, no one knew of, the, of any force powerful enough to move continents on the Earth's surface. The theory of seafloor spreading was a big clue to solve the mystery. And this picture is showing us seafloor spreading was one of the several key pieces of geo geological evidence that led to the theory of plate tectonics. Think of the continents as riding on top of the plates. As the plates move, so do the continents. It was the study of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that first made scientists consider the possibility of seafloor spreading. They concluded that the seafloor spreads as the seafloor spreads, the continents on either side of the Atlantic are pushed further apart. Scientists soon discovered that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is just one of many mid-ocean ridges. These ridges are found in all the world's oceans wherever tectonic plates are slowly moving. Altogether, mid-ocean ridges form a near-continuous chain of mountains that wraps around the Earth like the stitching on a baseball. Spanning 40,389 miles, the chain of mid-ocean ridges is by far the world's longest mountain range. It is also the most volcanically active. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is just a part of this gigantic underwater mountain chain. Erupting lava has built up high walls of basalt on either side of the rift. The rift itself is nearly as deep as the Grand Canyon. If you travel along the ridge, you'll soon see more than just high walls of dark rock. And the red here is showing where the mid-ocean ridges form a near continuous chain of underwater mountains. Hydrothermal vents. At first glance, it looks like a fire. Black smoke is billowing up from a spot in the ridge. It's not smoke though, it's searing hot, dark water gushing out of cracks in the rock. It is a hydrothermal vent. Hydrothermal vents are a bit like geysers in Yellowstone National Park. 
These deep sea geysers are much, much hotter than anything on land. Hydrothermal vents form as seawater sinks down through the cracks in the oceanic crust. As it nears the magma lying below the crust, the water is heated to incredibly high temperatures. It can reach an astonishing 750 degrees Fahrenheit. <coughs> the water is so hot that it dissolves minerals from the surrounding basalt. The minerals become part of the hot liquid like salt does when it's stirred into a glass of water. At a hydrothermal vent, superheated, mineral-rich water comes roaring back up through the cracks in the crust. It shoots out of the rock with the force of water blasting out of a fire hydrant. When hot vent water meets cold seawater, the dissolved minerals in the vent water become solid again and they form tiny particles. The particles make the vent water look like dark smoke. How do scientists find hydrothermal vents? They hunt for them from ships at sea. Hot, mineral-rich water moves slowly away from hydrothermal vents. It forms a plume or cloud of mineral particles that drifts away from the vent, like smoke from a chimney. If the scientists locate a plume, they send down a robot vehicle. When it locates the vent, the robot sends pictures back to the scientists. There is more to hydrothermal vents than clouds of hot black water. Communities of amazing and unusual animals live around many of these deep sea geysers. Red-topped giant tube worms are the largest animals near vents. Some types of giant tube worms can grow as tall as a person. The vents are also home to ghostly white crabs, football-sized clams, and pale blind shrimp. Scientists believe there are tens of thousands of hydrothermal vents along the world's mid-ocean ridges. Scientists, however, have explored only a handful of them. Finding a new one is always exciting. Scientists often discover new types of animals as well. Seamounts are another type of underwater mountain. Seamounts are underwater volcanoes that come in many shapes and sizes. Some are just a few hundred feet high. Others tower thousands of feet above the seafloor. Although their tops are still far beneath the Earth's surface, I'm sorry, the ocean surface, if a seamount grows high enough to rise above the ocean surface, it becomes an island. And you can see that here. So the underwater volcano grew so far up that it hit above the ocean and it became an island. Seamounts can form wherever magma is erupting through the oceanic crust. Many seamounts form alongside mid-ocean ridges or along subduction zones. Finally, seamounts can also form over hot spots far from plate boundaries. The islands that make up the Hawaiian island chain began as seamounts. As you read in chapter four, each island formed over a hot spot that underlies the center of the Pacific plate. As a result of repeated volcanic eruptions, each island began as a small seamount that grew over time. Eventually, its top broke the water surface, making it an island. Scientists estimate that there are at least 100,000 seamounts over 3,000 feet tall in the, oceans, in the world's oceans. Since most seamounts are far below the ocean surface, studying them is a challenge. Scientists have explored a few firsthand, traveling down in submersibles. More often, they send robot vehicles down to do the investigating. No two seamounts are exactly alike. Many are teeming with life, even those that are very deep. Water flowing around these deep sea volcanoes brings up nutrients from the ocean bottom. Nutrients fuel the growth of tiny single-celled organisms in the water. These, in turn, become food for larger organisms, including animals that live on and around seamounts. Seamounts are often home to deep-sea corals, sponges, brittle stars, crabs, and anemones. Great schools of fish live around seamounts, too. Seamounts aren't the only undersea feature that forms along subduction zones. Where one plate slides under another, the seafloor dips down to create an extremely narrow, deep valley. These ocean trenches are the deepest places on the planet. The Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean is the deepest ocean trench. It lies just off the Mariana Islands, east of the Philippines. The Mariana Trench is hundreds of miles long, but just 43 miles wide. It is like a deep slash in the ocean bottom. The trench's deepest known point is an area called the Challenger Deep. It is 36,070 feet beneath the ocean surface, which is almost seven miles down. 
By comparison, the average depth of the ocean is 14,000 feet. What is it like in the ocean's deepest spot? It is pitch black. The temperature of the water is only a few degrees above freezing. The water pressure is very high, equivalent to having three big SUVs pressing down on every inch of your body. Only three people have traveled to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. More people have landed on the moon. Several robot vehicles have also made the trip. These visits have provided only brief glimpses of this remote and extreme environment. And this is talking about those three people that did make it down um, to the Mariana Trench. All right, number one, what is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? Make sure to go back, it tells you exactly what it is in the text. Blank is the process of oceanic plates moving apart very slowly. Which is the most volcanically active mountain range in the world? What are hydrothermal vents? Why are scientists interested in hydrothermal vents? Which animal on page 86 are you most interested in learning about? Why do you think the animals of the deep sea hydrothermal vents are so different from the animals that live elsewhere on the planet. So think about what is different about these hydrothermal vents than the environment that we live in. Number eight, true or false, seamounts are very easy for scientists to study. Number nine, what is an ocean trench? Number 10, what is not a reason people have trouble going to the bottom of the Mariana Trench? Number 11, we have a sentence here. The first expedition took place in 1960. Expedition means a journey taken to explore a place no one has been before. So give me an example of an expedition. What is an example of a journey taken to a place where no one has been before? And then number 12, what part of speech is that word? Okay, let's head over to skills. We're gonna work on our descriptive paragraph again. So you're gonna click on this link and it's gonna take you to this skills lesson where you typed in at the bottom your plan for your paragraph um, about the rocks. So you picked a type of rock and you gave some details about it. You already did that work the other day. So today I gave you an example of a final paragraph. So this is my final paragraph. As I read this to you, I want you to pay attention to some things. The topic sentence, so the, the sentence that introduces what we're going to be reading about. The concluding sentence sums up the paragraph. I want you to look for any metaphors or similes. So those are comparing two things. A simile uses the word like or as. He is as fast as a rabbit or her smile is the sun. Personification, that is when we describe non-human things using human qualities. So the leaves danced in the wind. Leaves can't dance. So we're giving them human characteristics and that's called personification. And the last thing I want you to look for is alliteration. So when you use alliteration, you're repeating the same beginning sound. So Morgan, mouse, munched, marshmallows, merrily. We're repeating that mm sound. All right, so pay attention for those as I read my example paragraph. My name is Leah Lava and I feel as hot as the sun. That's probably because I'm lava shooting down the side of an active volcano. I hear a deep rumble behind me as rocks and debris spew out of the mountain and I wonder if the plume is still reaching toward the blackening sky like an opening umbrella. As soon as I feel the air touch me, I begin to cool down. Thank goodness, it was getting awfully hot. As I cool, I harden, forming igneous rock. After all that hot activity, I feel like I like feeling wind blow across me and rain rinse my body. Sometimes I get uncomfortable in the scorching sun or the freezing rain, but I feel calm listening to the birds chirping around me and tasting the water that trickles over me. All right, so that was very descriptive. Um, I don't expect that much from you guys, but I do expect you to use the prompts below to add some figurative language to your paragraph. So first of all, tell me which one of those is a topic sentence and tell me where the concluding sentence is located. 
All right, you've got these posters to help you here. Make sure you go back and refer to them. Which one of those words gives human characteristics to objects? Which one uses the same beginning letter or sound? And which one compares two things using like or as? Now you're going to go back and add to this paragraph you already started. So again, you already started this here. So be sure to scroll down, view your score, and look at what you wrote for these different prompts. You already started this, so you're not starting from scratch. Um, so you're going to tell me a sentence using alliteration for your paragraph. So maybe you want your um, name to be alliteration. Or you can just add in any sentence to your paragraph that uses alliteration. So in mine, I said Leah Lava. There's my um, alliteration. So both names start with an L. So think of one sentence you can add to your paragraph that uses alliteration. Now you're going to write a simile. So again, a simile compares two things using like or as. In our paragraph, I said, I feel as hot as the sun. I'm comparing how I feel to the sun. And I, as you can see, I use the word as, so that would be a simile. So give me a simile that you can add to your paragraph. And then lastly, you're going to write a sentence using personification. So giving your object human characteristics. So let's see what I use in my paragraph. Um, let's see. Right here, I hear a deep rumble behind me. Uh, volcanoes, lava, they can't hear. So we're giving them human characteristics, hearing. So you can do um, dancing, talking, um, any action that humans do that that object normally couldn't do. Like in our example here, the leaves were dancing. So come up with um, personification to add to your paragraph. And that is it for today. Um, I know this writing might be a little bit tricky, but you guys can do it. And we are here to help you if you are stuck. So hop on Zoom. And I will see you all next time. Have a great rest of your day.